my I am Valorous music tutorials, and in this video I would like to show you how to set up the Roland A800 Pro MIDI keyboard controller in Reaper. Basically I'm going to show you how to set up all of these controls, these buttons, these buttons, these faders, these knobs, in Reaper without the need for the A Pro editor. Because I'll be quite honest, I did try messing with the A Pro editor for a while, and I couldn't make a lot of sense of it. I, I read through the manual, I, I studied it pretty deeply even. I did research online, and it never became apparent to me how I can say click on this and make it do what I want it to do. None of these things ever made any sense to me, so I decided... I was just going to toss this aside and see what Reaper had. And as it turns out, Reaper has what you need to set everything on this controller to do what you want. So first I'm going to cover these D-pads, the dynamic pads, and show you how I got those set up. I actually had to build a little something to get those working. Basically what I have here is eight instances of Resamplomatic 5000 put on an instrument track. And each instance is assigned to each dynamic pad, as you see, A1, A2, A3. How I did that was I figured out what MIDI notes each of these pads are automatically assigned to. So A1 is 36, A2 is 38, a3 is 42, and what I did was I simply made the note start and the note end on that MIDI note for each one. And it works. So, to show it, I have some drum samples here that I'm going to be dragging and dropping. So, here's a snare that I'm going to drag and drop into A1. Now it works, and... Here's a kick. I'm going to go into A2. And it just works. There isn't any other confusion about it. It just works. And that's what matters at the end of the day, that, that it works. Now, I have not done extensive testing on this. I haven't had this extensively tested yet. So it, it is possible that the default notes that were on my keyboard are not the same default MIDI notes that were assigned on yours. So if it turns out that this does not work for you, all you need to do is figure out what MIDI note, say, A3 for an example, is assigned to. As you see, if it actually triggers, the green box right here lights up. So how you figure that out is you make the note start at zero and the note end at 127. That's, that's, that is every single note possible in MIDI. So if it triggers, that means somewhere between zero and 127, one of those notes is assigned to A3. And you simply shrink it until you figure it out. All right, so it's, it stopped going. That means it's below 44, below 43, Forty-two. So I set both of them to forty-two. And that's that. So if in the case that any of these do not work, that's what you have to do to make them work. And how you can use this is obviously you can download this as a track template. So you and after you do that, you right click here. Insert track from template, open template, and here is your track template folder. After you download the A800 D-pad sampler template from the Reaper stash that I have it uploaded to, you drag and drop it into this folder. And then you open it up in Reaper and it'll open up just like this with no samples. And then you drag and drop any old audio samples you want and it simply works as simple as that. So with all of that covered, now let's go over all of these faders and knobs and all of these controls to make all of those work. Alright, so now we're going to be covering these buttons right here, like the record, the pause, the play, the stop, etc. How do you get all of these set up? 
Well, it's actually a little bit easier than you think, but unless you happen to know where to go, well, it's almost impossible. What you need to do is click on the Actions button up here, and then Show Actions List. This is a list of everything that you can set something to. So there's just so many things here. You obviously have to filter it. So what you're going to want to do is look up transport. And then what you want. So let's say transport play. All right, so here is transport play. So all that you do is with this highlighted, click add down here in the in the shortcuts for selection. Sorry, in, in the shortcuts for selected action, click add. And then simply tap the button or control you want. In this case, we're going to tap this button. You press OK and now it works. And you do that the same for everything. So let's say uh, pause, which is right there, so no need to look it up. Add. And you press the pause button. And it works. Oh, and also sometimes, like you may have noticed that I press pause and it puts the thing there but keeps on going. What you need to do is in the add thing, after you press the button, um, move it to relative. And now it'll work better. And so on and so forth with all of these buttons. For record, you simply find record, add, press record. And if it doesn't happen to act quite like you want, simply make it relative. And that's that. That is how you get all of these buttons to work. Alright, so now let's talk about the faders and the knobs. Let's say that you want the faders to be assigned to the tracks. What you're going to want to look up is uh, track, sorry, I have my um, typing keyboard behind my MIDI keyboard so it's uh, a bit clumsy to type right now. So uh, track set volume. Y you could also set like um, pan for an example by looking that up if you want to do that. But in this case, we're looking up volume. So let's set the volume for track two with this second one right here. All right, so all you do Wait, uh, yeah, so all you do is you click add and you simply move around what you want. Um, maybe I shouldn't have had that, um, maybe I want that in absolute. Yeah, there we go, and I guess make sure it's on absolute, because if it's not, it's going to be all wonky. And then you do that for all of these things. The way that I actually have it set up is, um, kind of interesting. You may see up here, set, um, set volume for selected tracks. I have that set to the knob right here. So what that means is it'll move the track that is selected. And I personally find that to be really, really useful. That means opposed to just clicking on it, then adjusting it with both my mouse, all I do is I click on it and I move this knob and it's, it's easy. I love it. And you can do all sorts of stuff like that. So that's how you set all of the faders and knobs. But what if you want to set them to a virtual instrument? Well, that's where the actions menu will fail you. What you need to do to set it to a virtual instrument, I'm going to open up a virtual instrument. Huh. Forefront R piano. It, it's a free virtual instrument that sounds really nice. Boom. 
But let, let's say that I just have to have the dynamic set to its own knob. You have to go to the envelopes for that. So you click on this button right here. And you see the forefront R piano settings. All of these settings are things you can set to a knob or a fader or something. So all that you do is you click the learn button. So let's see, I'm looking for, huh. How about drive cutoff? So I press learn and it brings up that familiar screen. So all that you do, let's use this knob right here, is you twiddle around that knob. Okay. And now it works. I am now controlling the drive forefront piano simply with my knob. And for a better visual cue of this, what you can do is click on the UI button right here. So even if you have the interface closed, you can still see that you are in fact moving it. All right, so on top of drive cutoff, I want regular drive. What you can also do is after clicking on the UI to appear here, you right click on that, click on learn, go through the process again, and all is well. So that's everything now. You now learned how to set up the D-pads. You learned how to set these and these to what you want and how to make all these buttons work. So now, simply with the controls built into Reaper, without the need for the A Pro Editor, you have what you need to completely set up this keyboard, or really any MIDI keyboard, inside of Reaper. So I hope you found this useful, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe, and check out my Bandcamp and my SoundCloud. So with that, I hope you have a great day.